Welcome to the Insurgents Podcast with Frank Viola. And he's brought a friend. This is the podcast that supplements Frank's groundbreaking book, Insurgents, Reclaiming the Gospel of the Kingdom, which is shaking up the Christian world. You can find out details about the book at insurgents.org. Sit back, open all four ears, physical and spiritual, and join the insurgents. Here's Frank. Welcome, welcome everyone to another edition of the Insurgents Podcast. And we are still going through every reference to the kingdom of God in the Gospels. This is a project that I am fully committed to until we get to the very end of the New Testament, the book of Revelation, and we look at every reference to the kingdom there. But right now, we're still in the Gospels. And I have Timbo with me, my esteemed conversation partner, and uh, he's going to read the text, and he's going to kick us off. This is the parable of the vineyard owner in Matthew chapter 20, but I'm actually going to start at the verse before it, chapter 19, verse 30, Mm. and I think as soon as I finish reading, you're going to see why I thought that was important to do. But many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. Mm. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius for the day, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. Mm. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received a denarius. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. Mm. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? Mm. So the last will be first and the first will be last. And this is an image of the kingdom that Americans hate. Mm. This, is a, this is an image of the kingdom that every fair-minded, hard-working person feels is just not the way that things should be. Mm-hmm. Because people who work hard should get more than people who don't work as hard. Mm. And that's a simple principle of life in the world. But it is not a simple principle of life in the kingdom. Mm. Jesus is saying that the kingdom of heaven is like this whole situation. It's a, it's a whole, this whole story gives us a, a deep insight into something that's fundamentally true about the kingdom. This landowner goes out and hires people for the standard daily wage at the beginning of the day. The absolute fair thing to do. There's agreement. There's willingness to work. There's, there's not. There's no. There's no compelling happening here, right? This is a mm. freely entered, in, freely entered into a free invitation. They can go work for somebody else if they want to, or say no, I don't want to work today. They agree. Mm. But the landowner, he doesn't 
just go with the people that are that are available at the beginning of the day. He keeps on going back. And there's subtle changes as the day goes on, right? He goes back and he says to the people that are standing around at nine o'clock, you go into the vineyard and I'll pay you whatever is right. Mm. They get some kind of they get some kind of assurance mm. that there's gonna be compensation, right? right? They get some kind of assurance that there will be a measure of fairness. And that happens two more times. But then the people at five o'clock, they get nothing. They don't mm. they don't get to negotiate for a denarius. They don't get even a promise that I'll give you what's right. The landlord just says, Go to the vineyard. You've been standing here all day, and they're like, "Well, nobody hired us. Here's some grace. Go into the vineyard." Mm-hmm. That no expectations are set up. See, and I think that that's that's what happens with the kingdom, right? That there are some of us. There are some people who who see the the goodness of the kingdom, who hear the message, and are like, "Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. I'm I'm, I'm in. I hear. I see you, Lord. I'm in. I'm in." And the Lord keeps coming back to people, right? The Lord just doesn't doesn't just say, well, I'm only taking the most eager people. Mm. That's not the way it works. And so these other people get invited until the last group gets invited to with no, with mm. no expectations. Of course, the thing that goes crazy is when pay time comes <laughs> and the people that only work for an hour get a, get a denarius. Well, see, even that's really not the problem. It's not a problem that those last people get a denarius. Right. right. The problem is the first people also just get a denarius. <laughs> and that's a problem because, boy, we worked so hard. And the message here is the kingdom is not about earning. The kingdom is about following the landowner, about following the Lord. It's mm. about connection. It's not about... Mm-hmm. How hard do you work? And that's the thing that I think is so hard. Our ideas of fairness mm-hmm. are connected with our ideas about what the kingdom is like, because fairness is just fairness. Everybody knows it. But the Lord is trying to say, no, the only way that there's life, there's only, there's, there's only life in the kingdom, and it's one life. Mm-hmm. The, the, the denarius, the daily wage, it was just enough to live on. If you got half a denarius, you weren't feeding your kids. Mm. Right? If you got a quarter of a denarius, you know, everybody in the family was going to be hungry. So as everybody gets life, everybody gets life. That's the, that's the message. And I think it's not a coincidence that this whole story gets framed by, but many of our first will be last, and many of our last will be first. And then the last will be first, and the first will be mm-hmm. last. That there's, a, there's an equality in the kingdom, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but just inequality of life, right? I mean, there, there are plenty of other passages that talk about rewards, right. but this is about life. Eternal life. This is about life. Yeah, Jesus just continues to parabolize the kingdom. And with this one, it's, it's a businessman, right? Hiring workers at different times. I think it was great that you read the last passage there in uh, chapter 19, because you have to remember the New Testament, the Gospels also were not divided up into chapters and verses. Mm. So it's significant, I think, that preceding this parable, you have, the, you have the story of the rich man who was offered the kingdom, but he loved his possessions and his money too much. Mm. And Jesus made some strong statements about the rich entering into the kingdom. And uh, we won't read it, but it's there in chapter 19, beginning with verse 16 onward. But Peter's response, when he sees the rich young ruler, uh, when you put all the versions in the Gospels together, it's it's a rich young man who rules. And Peter says, we've given up everything to follow you. This is verse 27. What shall we get? And so I think the Lord is is responding to him Mm. and everyone who thinks like him in this parable. I've been serving you for a long time. I have sacrificed. I have given up. And this guy just came in, the doors of the kingdom. He's known you for, what, a day? And he's going to get the same eternal life that I'm getting. He's going to get the same overall reward 
Now, a case can be made that there are other rewards that people get according to their faithfulness and their work for the Lord, but that's another conversation, and we had it in a previous episode. But as you say, this is the big enchilada. This is the eternal life. (laughs) And it's significant that he uses these different time frames. You know, the third hour was nine in the morning. That was the first batch of workers. The sixth hour is noon. The ninth hour is 3 p.m. and the 11th hour is 5 p.m. Well, the difference between those who were hired at the ninth hour and those who were hired last at the fifth hour, that's eight hours. They had worked eight hours longer and yet they're being paid the same. And so some of them perceive it to be unfair. But again, it's all by grace, right? (laughs) And it's not about earning. The kingdom of God is not quid pro quo. And so this parable is an assault against our justice system of merit, the merit-based system that we all grew up with. But grace levels everything out, and we all receive that same reward of eternal life. Some commentators have said that this was Jesus attacking Jewish superiority and elitism because of course the Jewish people look down on the Gentiles and as the story goes the Jews came into the kingdom first and then the Gentiles came after and so some have said you know the Lord was taking dead aim at the anti-Gentile bias because the Jews came in first and then the Gentiles later. I, I don't know if that was in his mind. It certainly applies, but I think it can apply to anybody who has been serving the Lord for a long time and may, may have this air of superiority toward those who are baby Christians, so to speak, and have just come into the kingdom. This is all about generosity, the generosity of the king, not reciprocity. So it's fascinating, really, especially for an American. And I would hate for somebody to hear this or read it and think, well, I'm just going to wait until I'm on my deathbed because, hey, the last gets the same reward as the first. And so I'm just going to live it up and have a good time. But 2 Corinthians 6.2 says, today is the salvation And for the person who waits the last hour just before the grave to put off repentance, the truth is it's unlikely that they're actually going to repent, even though they think they may. What say you? And in the parable, all the people respond when they're invited. The people at night, there aren't some people at nine o'clock in the morning who say, "Uh, you know what, well, it's kind of, it's going to be too hot working around noon. Why don't you come back at five and invite me then? (laughs) That's not the way that it works. It's just that the invitation keeps coming. And there's not a problem until it's Mm. clear that the people that get the last invitation are just as valued Mm. as the as the people that came first. Mm. Those those guys that are working at first, they would have been, hey, got my job, got a good day's work in, got my denarius, life is great. It's only when the comparison happens, mm. and I think that's I think that's a I think that's a real message for us that there's no comparison in the kingdom. Yeah, comparison will prevent us from enjoying the goodness mm. of the kingdom. It was like when we were talking earlier when you were saying that our capacity for enjoying the Lord is dependent on. Our whole our whole life right it's not mm-hmm. it, it, it we are changed as we live with mm-hmm. the Lord we're changed we, we, we grow we have mm-hmm. more we have more connection and that's just a natural thing that's not that's not that God is is saying oh well here's more reward for you here you get two denarii no it's just mm-hmm. it's just a natural consequence of of living in the eternal life that starts now because yes. I think that I think the the error of the scenario that you are saying, well, I'm just going to party it up and and, <laughs> and repent on my deathbed, is 
No, it, it's not like eternal life is just something after your deathbed. That's right. Eternal life starts now. The kingdom starts now. That's right. And we live into it in, into, into it. the future. Yeah. I like that there are people who are hired and their words are, no one would hire us. Mm. And this businessman mm. hires them mm. and pays them. He was not unfair or unjust because... He kept his word. He told them what they would get. Right. Right. So the complaint was on their end because his way of measuring payments differed from their system. But it just makes me think that that the people who said no one will hire us kind of echoes a theme throughout the Gospels that Jesus is going to the people who are the leftovers Mm. the overseen the left out Mm -hmm. (laughs) uh, the people who nobody wants and I I think this is a great word for people who are listening to this who feel excluded Mm. you know you're not invited to the parties well the sanctified parties because you don't want to go to the typical party anyway you're not invited to the conferences that you probably should be invited to you're not invited to be part of the team. Um, you're not invited to work on the project that you've always wanted to work on. Other people are selected. And you feel left out. No one would hire us. Well, here's a man who will hire you. Hmm. And Jesus Christ is that man. He will hire you. His kingdom is open to all and any. If you simply follow what he said, become like a little child, become poor in spirit, trust and follow him. The kingdom's yours. It's one more way of saying that greatness in the world does not equal greatness in the kingdom. Yes. And in fact, it's often precisely the precisely the opposite. And I really think that that's one of Jesus' points in this story and that's why it's framed by the last shall be first and the first shall be last the first shall be last and the last shall be first that the kingdom is a place and a reality that is not concerned with human estimations of greatness Mm -hmm. it's not concerned with our ideas of who matters more Mm. and I think Jesus really wants to make that point because he could have told the story as, well, the landowner called the workers who worked first and had them come up first and get their denarius and go on the way. And then there's no problem, right? Because they're already on their way when the last people get their denarius. But Jesus wants to, Jesus wants to make the point that there is, there is a welcome for everybody in the kingdom and that's part of what the kingdom is. And we, we are called to, to recognize that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, as we, where we started out today, how does the kingdom progress? It progresses through frail human beings, mm-hmm. right? That's confessing that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Mm-hmm. I want to add something to what you said. I think it's very important. I love how you say you know, greatness in the world does not equate to greatness in the kingdom. Brother, that applies to the religious world also. Mm. Greatness in the religious world, prestige in the religious world, those who are given honor and those who are esteemed in the religious world has nothing to do with status in the kingdom of God. In mm. fact, I would say that the greatest people in the kingdom and i'm using jesus phrase because he would use that great in the kingdom greatest in the kingdom are people who are not recognized and who are overlooked Mm. who are ostracized in the religious world and by the religious world by the gatekeepers and the the promoters and the people who are uh, at the top of the ladder the religious world is part of the world system and i've talked about this at length in the book Insurgents, but there is a good old boys network in modern Christianity. And if you are really following the Lord, 
completely fully and in reality, there is an excellent chance that you're not going to be part of that club because you're not willing to do what's required to get in that club. Mm. I wrote about this recently on my blog, but I think this parable is so beautiful in everything it teaches, but especially, for me anyway, I love the fact that some of them said, no one will hire us. Mm. Well, you're going to be on our team, come on, and we're going to pay you the same as everyone else. Amen. 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 Well, we will see you next time. Until then, be safe, be blessed, and be good. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to the Insurgents Podcast and give it a five-star review on iTunes. This will help others find it. Also, you can join Frank's unfiltered email list at frankviola.org and receive encouragement, challenges, and insights connected to the gospel of the kingdom. Remember, the insurgence has begun. Don't miss it.